Hi friends! Today's demonstration is much requested by many of you who loved a card that I shared in my last video, which was for the mirror image and reflection technique. Can you guess the card? If you guessed this butterfly card, you're right! This card was one that I had already done prior to my last video and I had made this for a very dear friend of mine and I shared it because of course it has the mirror image technique and oh my goodness so many of you asked me could you please do a video and show us how you made that butterfly card and I am happy to do that. This is a, such a beautiful card. It's actually quite easy to do. It's a lot of fun to do and it has that mirror image technique technique as well. So let me show you how you can make this card yourself at home. Okay, so for this card, I'm using our Touch of Ink stamp set. Now, this stamp set is a celebration stamp set that you can earn for free with a qualifying order until the end of this month, February 28th. Um, and it is sensational. So I am going to um, get my outline of the butterfly and then just get that ready on my block. And then the first thing I'm going to show you is how I created the background. So to do that, you are going to need an e-block. And I also have two pieces of shimmery white cardstock. Now on this original card that I made, I just used our basic white cardstock and that worked just fine. But I decided I wanted to use shimmery for this one. So to create the background, I'm going to pull in some ink pads and I can't remember every color I used on this original one but I will try to uh, duplicate it. So right now I'm just taking old olive and I'm just stamping it right onto this block and some crushed curry and I don't want to get that old olive into my crushed curry ink pad. So I'm just being careful when where I tap that because when I miss this with water, um, it's going to merge it all together anyways. I think I just use colors from my Regals, um, from the Regals collection. So let's pull in some pumpkin pie. I'm just gonna dab that kind of between the yellow and the old olive and some ra rich razzleberry going right above that yellow and then I pulled in some pretty peacock which is such a pretty color okay so now the fun part I am taking one of our stamp and spritzers and it's just filled with water and I'm going to just lightly mist just until you see all that ink kind of rolling into the other colors and then flip it over center it onto your cardstock now this cardstock measures four by five and a quarter and I like to just press it and hold it down for a moment it's always fun to see all the colors going together and then I'm gonna pull it up, which is gonna kind of pull that water with it. So I'm just kind of careful because that's gonna move some of that ink as you lift it up. See how I have that there? So I'm just gonna take some tissue and just dab at that. Now you can see this turned out very different than that one. I don't have as much blue and I really wanted some blue in there. Using my water painter, I'm gonna squeeze some water and then I'm just gonna tap it on my finger so I can get some water marks on here. Just for, just for a fun little splatter. Now you really wanna make sure that this is dry before you emboss on it. So I'm going to take my um, my heat tool and just zap this. Okay, so there's the background piece. Super, super pretty. And even though it doesn't have all that blue, you're never going to get the same background twice when you're doing this technique. But it is absolutely beautiful. So I'm going to set that aside. So now I'm bringing in a piece of scrap basic white and this is what I'm going to use to stamp this wing right here. So let's bring that in. 
I'm just going to wipe this with the anti-static bag, our embossing buddy. Okay, so I'm going to ink this with Versamark. And I'm going to just stamp it right here. I'm going to set that aside. Then I'm going to bring in this piece because it's dry now. I'm also going to rub it with that same anti-static. And I'm going to stamp two butterflies on here. Now one needs to be the mirror image. Okay, so I have brought in my silicone craft mat. And I really want to make sure this is inked up. Really, really good. So I'm just going to ink that butterfly right onto that mat. And can you see the outline? Kinda. What I'm going to do is, actually I want that there. I'm going to bring this in. I'm going to flip this around and you can't see it as well as you can if you had used a dark ink pad but for this card it's going to be fine okay just pushing down nice and firm you don't want to rub it too much because it's going to wiggle on there and what I'm going to do before I stamp my next butterfly is I'm going to sprinkle on my gold embossing powder so I can actually see where that butterfly is. Ta-da! There he is. In reverse. It's magic. So now I'm going to stamp my second butterfly. And I'm going to put this one right here. And I want it to overlap on those edges just a bit. There's my second butterfly, and then the one I stamped here. And now I'm gonna sap those with the heat tool. Isn't that pretty? Such a fun way to use that mirror image technique. So now it's time to color in the butterfly wings. It seems every time I'm stamping, I have all this space on my desk and all of a sudden everything comes closer and closer and closer and I just have this tiny little space to stamp. Does that happen to you guys? Because it happens to me all the time. All right, so somewhere on here, because that's the other thing is you lose things when you're stamping. I'm going to take my Bermuda Bay. Because I don't have as much blue on the background as I kind of originally wanted, I'm going to pull some of that blue into my, um, into my butterfly. So I'm going to use my water painter. And just as a reminder, I mentioned in my last video, um, I have some of the old style ink pads still with Stampin' Up! and some of the new ones. The old ones, it was easier to squeeze the lid so that you can get your puddle of ink on the top. But when you're using our newer ink pads, I just dab the ink onto a clear block. And I also know some of you guys have asked, what do the letters mean on your ink pads? It just means the collection that they belong to. So the B means it belongs to our Brights collection. Alrighty. Let's have some fun coloring the butterflies. So I'm literally using quite a bit of water because the uh, embossed edges are keeping that color inside the image. So that's pretty fun. So I'm just going to do them all the same. They may look a little bit different when it's all said and done, but that's that's fine too because of course you see you've got that ink behind this blue so that's going to be a bit different um, but that's all right and this one's going to have the butterfly wing attached to it like the flap on this one but I do want to color behind it because you will see little bits of this wing popping through I'm just going to go through and add some more All right, it's good. Now before I go into the next color, I'm gonna go back and forth on my paper to make sure I've got all that ink off my brush. So for my next color, I'm bringing in some rich razzleberry. 
just picking some of that up and I'm gonna just put that on and I'm letting it just overlap on some of that blue so it kind of merges into a different color altogether I love using the water painters and inks it's so much fun but see how you've got the different colors happening you've got the blue and then a deeper purple and then that rich razzleberry I just love it sure that you're working with water on that tip you don't want this tip to be um, dry because that ink is not going to flow properly and I'm just kind of going in little tiny circles there's no right or wrong and if you've never really used um, a water painter before it just takes practice I'm just pulling some of that color down some of that color up until I get the look I like now I want to add a little bit of the Highland Heather so because this is our newer style ink pads I'm gonna dab that ink onto my block to pick it up they just don't work as well for squeezing to get that ink on the, the lid so yep that's clean pick up some of that Highland Heather and just kind of work that in I absolutely am loving this color combination and I'm gonna add one more color on top of this How gorgeous that is looking Oh, so pretty it makes me happy okay I have put a little bit of poppy parade on this block just because I just want a little bit of red right down at the bottom you actually can see that red even on top of this background I don't know if the camera's picking it up but you can definitely see where I've added that red and any ink that's sitting on top of the embossing I will just wipe that off I just realized you guys I did not mirror image this wing like I did on this card um, so this wing is going to go on this butterfly but to mirror image I just did it exactly the same as I did on this card for that extra wing but that is just fine all right I'm now gonna take the flower from the same stamp set and I'm gonna also emboss that in gold And then somewhere on here, here we go. I've got another piece of shimmery white and it's also cut to measure uh, five and a quarter by four. This is gonna go on the inside of the card. So again, rub that with the embossing buddy. And I'm gonna stamp this one here. I'm gonna bring in my mat this corner doesn't have anything on it so I'm gonna stamp my flower and mirror image that on the bottom all right eek I kind of wiggled that a bit let's see how this comes out have a little bit of powder where I don't want it so I'm just gonna take a dry paintbrush and brush that off so I just want to point out if you're new to heat embossing you don't want to hold the heat tool so close to the paper that you actually scorch the paper and what I do is I tend to go in little tiny, tiny circles and you can also go on the reverse side of the paper and just kind of move it around afterwards because you can see if there's still powder on there or not and if you've missed any um, parts of the images when you've been heat setting it all right so it's looking good now it's time to color these I'm gonna do it that way so I have a bit of poppy 
sprayed still on here so get some water running so I'm just gonna pick up some of that ink and I'm just gonna kind of put it right in the centers I'm gonna pick up some of that Highland Heather and just float it around now I'm gonna pull in some of that rich razzleberry that we used on the butterfly and again make sure I've got squeezing out some water and I'm literally just going to kind of I'm squeezing as I'm dropping the ink I'm squeezing just gently on the barrel of this and just letting that ink kind of drop into the flower petals squeezing out a little bit more water because I want this one to just kind of stand out a little bit more on top of that old olive background that we have behind it and now I'm just going in with some more of the uh, poppy parade just because it's hard to see on this background and since I've got it out I'm gonna add some more in here I just realized I wanted these to be green for the leaves so I'm just gonna go in with my garden green marker right on top this is why I say don't stress this small stuff you can always cover it up I think what I'm going to do is just scribble on some green on my block and pick some of that up with the uh, water painter and then just, whoops, I need some there. Just going to lightly outline the stem just to pull some of that green in. So now I'm going to add a sentiment and I'm using the Thinking of You. And I'm going to use my Stamparatus because I want to make sure I get it nice and crisp and clear. And I'm going to stamp this with my black Memento ink pad. I love, love, love our Stamparatus. And that looks great, but I'm going to stamp it again. That looks even better. All right, so this piece is now ready to get glued onto my uh, card base. I'm gonna take my Wink of Stella and just go over this and add a little bit um, to add some shimmer glimmer pretty just like that but adding that extra wing is really gonna step it up so all I'm gonna do is take my paper snips and I'm gonna cut it out and I'm gonna cut right around the body because I've already got the body stamped on this card so I'm just gonna trim right around the wings So this wing is going to go right on top of that one. But what I want to do first is, I'm going to open this up, is in my last video, remember I mentioned, oh my goodness, I found a new bottle of crystal effects, but I'm so sad because we don't carry it anymore, which is true, but we do carry the shimmery crystal effects, which I would forgotten about. Um, so this is what I'm going to add to the wings, and this does have some fine glitter in it which is super pretty so all I'm gonna do let me zoom in is I'm just gonna take it and I'm just gonna gently squeeze and I'm just gonna go in between all the embossed lines I'm not gonna put it on top of the gold embossing and I'm using the tip of the applicator to also spread it around and this will give it a really fun 3d look to it and uh, that beautiful clear shiny gloss when it dries now this one is going to be underneath the wing so it's optional you don't have to do this I didn't do this on the wing be behind on the original card so on this one I didn't add it on here um, but I am on this one because why not why not Okay, so now that 
that has the uh, shimmery crystal effects on it and needs to dry completely before I move on to the next step. So I'm going to go let my dogs outside and I'll come back in about 10-15 minutes but for you it'll only be a second. Okay I'm back and the wings have dried. Look at that great dimension and that shine. So beautiful. So I am just going to gently um, bend this with my fingers just to give even more dimension and I'm going to take my liquid glue I'm just going to add a little bit right along the bottom and then what I'm going to do is line it up so that I'm lining it up with the wing tip and take my take your pick tool and I'm just going to push that down and I've got it raised up a bit And just give that a couple minutes to dry okay so what I have done is I have just wrapped around some of the black and white trim from the pampered pets and then just tied a knot and then I have put some of the gold twine that's part of the greenery uh, trim combo pack uh, also tied in the little knot and then the next thing you're going to need is a threader. So this is just a dental flosser thingamajigger that I use for beads and threading through buttons and what have you. So I'm just going to put my gold thread right through that threader and I want to keep it folded down. And I've got some of my beads here. So I've had these beads for years. So I've got a little collection of them going on. So I've Pulled a few out here. I'm gonna just, I'm bringing in colors that are on the card too, of course. So I've got some blues and some pinks, some whites and some golds. So all I'm gonna do is literally holding, holding this end down. I'm just gonna start threading these beads on. Okay, and then the last step is adding some rhinestones. So I'm going to take a medium size and put that up near the top on each butterfly. And then two of the tiny size rhinestones right below. Here is the finished card. Doesn't it turn out pretty? And it's got the little beads and of course you've got that little 3d wing and the mirror image on this butterfly and I did add some clear wink of Stella to this flower also and then of course on the inside And I'll show you again the original one that I made. So very different uh, background with the inks. I think I definitely used too much rich razzleberry on this one, but I just, I love them both and I think they both turned out really, really pretty. I did use more pinks on this card than I did on this one, but they're equally gorgeous. And then the inside of this one. So the same flowers and of course with that mirror image for that bottom flower. Isn't that fun? Oh my goodness, I really, really enjoyed making this card and I hope you guys had fun watching. Give it a try and I'd love to hear your feedback if you do give these cards a try and how you made out with them. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and the little bell next to it so you're notified every time I upload a new video. And here are a couple more videos that you may find interesting. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you. Happy stamping.